this was a five fucking hour show. Five fucking hours. And yet the WWE thought they still needed filler. I'll admit, I honestly feel bad for whoever sat in these seats. It's one thing to be in the nosebleed section during WrestleMania, but to be in the nosebleed section at AT&T Stadium, that's even worse. Usually everything is bigger in Texas, but the WWE got too lazy in customizing the WrestleMania stage to fit that statement. Seriously, I walked into the stadium and saw the stage and thought, that's it? That's the big WrestleMania stage? I know we like to get pumped up for WrestleMania, but this opening video package was three and a half minutes too long. As much as this song was enjoyable, I would have preferred some heavy metal to get us pumped up for WrestleMania. The AT&T Stadium is in Arlington, not Dallas. How many freaking times has that sign appeared at WrestleMania? It's like I see it everywhere I go. For the second damn year in a row, WrestleMania kicks off with a multiple man ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Announce table does not contain Jerry the King Lawler or Mauro Ranallo anymore. The Miz's weird looking outfit. Um, sorry Sin Cara, but angels don't botch. I'll be honest, in the weeks leading up to WrestleMania, I had completely forgotten Zack Ryder was still employed with the company. But now that he's made it to WrestleMania on his own, I'll just shut up and move on without sending this. Sammy didn't even connect with many of those forearms. You can beat up whoever you want, but you oh. gotta get Dolph just gave Sammy a spanking. What is the Miz thinking? He didn't set the ladder up properly. WrestleMania match. Copyright infringement. And Sammy. Oh. Oh. Sammy survived that without injury. There goes Zack's future kids. And Sammy, Zack oh. Oh. I'll give it to Sammy. He impressed me with that. John doesn't remember that it's going under the ladder that's bad luck, not through it. It's gonna happen right now! Sin Cara, Sin Cara apparently went through all his opponents and didn't really hit them at all. So Stardust in the back fell for absolutely no reason. And paying homage. Oh. 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 The super Copyright infringement. Oh. Ow, my hands! Oh. And Sin Cara. Stardust barely grazed Sin Cara with that hit. Oh, Miz, look out! Miz survived that without injury. Gonna get rid of the polka dotted ladder. Kevin is addicted to polka dotted ladders. Oh, 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 oh. Through, the ladder. through the ladder? Kevin didn't put Sammy through the ladder. It's not broken. Is Michael even watching the same match we are? Also, copyright infringement to Kevin. Zack had the chance to get the championship if he moved the ladder closer to the title. Instead, he decides to jump out from a far distance. This is WrestleMania! Please no Twitter trends during this event! Sin Cara is obviously too far away from the championship to make it there. Oh, Wait, Sin Cara actually didn't botch this? It's a WrestleMania miracle! And plus, sins are being removed because of the way this move was executed. Kevin survived that without injury. The only reason Zack Ryder won this match is because The Miz took way too much time in gloating at the top of the ladder and getting comfortable by sitting on it rather than just reaching up and retrieving the title. I mean, he probably holds the record for unhooking the money that make briefcase in the shortest amount of time since climbing the ladder. Why not now? But I will also give Zack Ryder his moment by removing a sin for the unpredictability of this victory. Zack's father put his hat on Zack and Zack just threw it down like a jerk. Why didn't they have the retractable roof open during this event? WrestleMania is presented by Snickers. Skip fucking Hulu. Would like to thank actor Kelsey Grammer. Random shout out. AJ's legs went sailing off of Chris before Chris flipped through the Hurricane Rana. Bad stairs. Prove that many times that he is the best in the world. AJ barely graced Chris with that kick. Hope that switching positions oh. and a style. Copyright infringement. Chris Jericho, this is his 13th WrestleMania. He's gonna be here next year. Unless, of course, Fozzie is performing on tour. Cover. Styles rolls the sh Chris, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to lift only one arm up. That's how you normally do it. That you can't sit with a sign makes me upset that I can't sit with those guys. Would get me a closer view of the action. Pace right now would seem to favor Jericho. Haha, <laughs> you missed him. We don't care who's tweeting during WrestleMania. Get it through your goddamn heads. Chris's PG insults. Back from Jericho. Whoever that was that screamed. Chris grabbing AJ's ass. And style. Chris almost slipped and dropped AJ. Underneath though, it, oh, got it. it cringes me every time Chris slowly goes for the pinfall, making it obvious that AJ is going to kick out. Attempted copyright infringement. Got him though. Oh, 
The one time in ages that WWE lets AJ use the Styles Clash, Chris kicks out and makes it seem like a regular move after the hell they just went through. And he does oh. it. Phenomenal oh. Jericho wins! Damn, apparently you can botch your finisher and still win a match at WrestleMania. Chris Jericho's crying face. What up with the Shane McMahon attachment to Maria's dress? That giant box of bootios was actually brought out during the Chris vs. AJ match, distracting almost the whole audience at some point. Oh my gosh. Am I the only one that thought we would see giant marshmallows as well in that bootios box? There are marshmallows on the actual box. Also, those bootios look more like Honey Nut Cheerios. The New Day wasn't originally in that box. They entered through the other side after the box fell over. I am getting so many Dragon Ball Z visuals here. <laughs> This match was not for the tag team titles, probably just so the League of Nations could win, but still. The League of Nations are dicks to giant bootios. Previously on WWE. Again with those stupid trends. No, they no, Copyright infringement. Oh, wow. I don't know if that was a botch or not. Point is that move left me confused, so I'll just count it now and move on. Kofi didn't say boom, boom before delivering the boom drop. If you replaced it with New Day Rocks, then might as well call this new move the New Drop or something. Ballroom dancing. Big E botches the landing from the spear and somehow survives it without injury. Though that means Copyright infringement. Kofi somehow survived that without injury. Unfair victory. Rusev just slaps Sheamus' ass. Why Shawn Michaels is wearing his wrestling gear when he's not even going to have a match is beyond me. There's honestly no point in him wearing that. Copyright infringement. Shawn and Mick are wearing their wrestling gear, yet Steve Austin is not. The way Steve is dressed should honestly be the way the others are because they're not even competing. Okay, gotta admit though, seeing these three legends appear is definitely worth the center mover. So I'll give it to them. There is way too much shit going on for me to keep track. Sean didn't really connect full power into that sweet chin music. Also, Sean forgot to tune up the band first. Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold! JBL, you have no right to say that. Seeing Sean twerking along with Mick and Steve dancing are sinful in so many ways. It just looks embarrassing to their characters. Steve finally realized that he was destroying his reputation, sin removed. The fact that this match is called a no-holds-barred street fight is just plain dumb. It's two stipulations that are the same thing put together. Why not just call it a street fight? All street fights are no-holds-barred. What makes this match so different compared to the other types of matches? They won the King of the Ring, the Royal Rumble, and the WWE Championship. Once again, there goes John talking about the multiple accomplishments of Brock Lesnar like we don't even know. Where's that red wagon? Uh oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, I wouldn't send the multiple suplexes that Brock delivers in matches, as that's his thing now. But the fact is, what we believe to be a hardcore street fight was just a bunch of suplexes. So I will count a sin for every suplex Brock delivered in this match. Also, there's a screen at the top of AT&T Stadium keeping track of the suplexes in this match, as if we don't know how to count. A kendo stick and steel chairs were sadly the only weapons primarily used in this match. All the others made an appearance but never got involved in the action. The chainsaw wasn't working. Also, all these weapons given to Dean by Terry Funk and Mick Foley were hyped for a few weeks leading into this match, but they were nothing but props. Anytime they were introduced, Brock either suplexed or attacked Dean. And guess what? They were never brought into the match again. Two sins because the two most hyped up weapons were never used. Dean is addicted to laptops. And again. For the first time ever, I disagree with the fans chanting this is awesome because this match was anything but awesome. Oh, with the win. Not saying that Brock shouldn't have won this match, I'm just saying that this match should have been something more than just a dominating Brock Lesnar victory and wasting Dean away. Also, this match was a major letdown to those expecting a street fight. We didn't see a street fight. We saw a bunch of suplexes and a few chairs and kendo sticks. I'm not joking. I actually decided to go buy a hot dog and alcohol during this match because of the disappointment. Lo and behold, I didn't miss anything epic. Snickers ad. Better? Better. 
How does an original superstar turning into the copyright infringement chick better? You know what would have made Sting's appearance better? If he had his freaking paint on. Previously on WWE. Women's Championship. Yay, the Women's Championship has returned. About freaking time they get rid of the Divas Championship. You know why I would never use live music for an entrance at WrestleMania? Because it's cursed. Almost every time a superstar uses live music for an entrance, they usually lose. The robe Snoop Dogg is wearing. You've gotta be fucking kidding me. It's bad enough that Charlotte is a complete copy of her father, but now she is wearing his robes too? Double copyright infringement. Also, I said it before, I'll say it again. Charlotte doesn't need Ric Flair with her. Charlotte does not have to be involved in the decision to lose the title. What do you mean to lose the title? Charlotte's not the women's champion. She's the now retired Divas champion. Is, but a standing switch by Becky. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit, that was hilarious. Momentarily. Oh. What a devastating shot to the turnbuckle. Down, kick out by oh. Becky and oh. Becky. Ha ha, Michael just called Becky Biggie. Figure four and now she's looking to look to, to bridge into the- Copyright infringement. I understand that Sasha was paying tribute to Eddie Guerrero with the taunt and the frog splash, but it still doesn't change the sin. Which is copyright infringement! Also, WWE probably knew I would sin that as copyright infringement, so they made sure it was not caught on camera. But little did they know, I was actually there and saw it with my own eyes. Oh, Becky! Becky taking out Nate! Finally, about time justice was served. Charlotte on the what top row! No soul! No soul! Oh my god! Charlotte just did something that Ric Flair never did. It's a WrestleMania miracle. They knocked off by the boss. Conversations during matches. Ric Flair once again aided Charlotte into victory, especially at WrestleMania. You know the one thing that's really wrong with this match is Ric Flair. Since I said two cents in one section, count both of them. There's pyro outside even though no one in the stadium could see it. This match was a lose-lose situation here. It was randomly decided out of nowhere, and after the outcome of this match, nothing was changed. Who would have thought that one of the most hyped up matches would take us absolutely nowhere? Fake money. Yay, we get to walk down the ramp with daddy and watch him jump off 20 feet in a life or death situation. How exciting! And remember, if Shane wins this tonight, he takes over WWE with- Um, wrong, Michael. If Shane wins, he doesn't control WWE as a company itself. He just runs Monday Night Raw. Money Bill stuck to the cage. Five minutes of waiting for The Undertaker to make it to the ring. And emphatically slamming the door- Undertaker failed to close the door to the cell with the slamming. 